Hey guys, so we've got some pretty exciting news for you. Um, heaps of people have hit us up on um, Instagram for uh, tips for machines and things like that. So we've actually teamed up with Lama Zocco. So for Blackboard, we use Lama Zocco as all of our commercial machines. And this puppy is what they've brought out. Um, it's perfect for home baristas. So it just plugs into your normal 10 amp um, power point and um, it doesn't need to be plumbed in. So you can just add the water, filtered water yourself. So this guy literally makes like exactly what you'd expect in a cafe, um, as long as you know how to use it, which lucky for you guys, I'm gonna teach you how to do. Um, so if anyone's interested in um, getting this kit, you can head to the Blackboard website and you'll see the machine on there and the colors that it comes in. You'll also see the grinder on there. You can buy them as a kit together. Um, and then you'll also see um, what we're calling like our, assess our espresso essential kit and all of the things that I'll like make a point of that we like to use just to make it a little bit easier for you guys at home to make really good coffee. Um, but these guys are amazing. They've got temperature control. They've got, um, it's a little bit like coffee nerdy, but pre-infusion um, and it will just make your life easier, trust me. Um, the steam on them is just like happy days. Um, so yeah, this guy is like pretty much exactly what we use in our wholesale cafes, um, but the home version. Cool, so I'm gonna talk you through some of the kit that we've got here. So um, these grinders, most grinders will have some forks on them. And traditionally what people do is they will pop the um, handle on and grind straight into the porter filter here. The thing about that is every time you're filling it up, you're just doing it by eye and you'll end up with different amounts of coffee. So that makes it really hard to dial your grinder in um, because every time if you're putting in different amounts of coffee and you're running off seconds, it makes it really hard to, um, to you know, manage that variable. So for us, having a set of scales on your grinder with a little dosing cup just takes one of those variables out being weight. Because for blackboard coffee, we want to use 20 grams of ground coffee every time we're brewing a handle. So on the top of the grinder here, we've got, it says coarse and fine. So to, le to the left is coarse and to the right is fine. And just to give you an idea, there's a basket inside here, and we recommend using a VST 20 gram basket that's available on our website. And that's obviously because we're using 20 grams. Um, so if you picture this basket as a little bucket, which it is, um, if you were to put pebbles in here, the water would flow through the basket quite quickly. If you were to put sand in here, it would flow through quite slowly. So what we're trying to do with the grind is manage that both pebbles and sand to get the flow at the right rate that we want. And what we're aiming for is 30 to 35 seconds. So for example, if it runs in 20 seconds, our coffee is too much like pebbles, which means it's too coarse and the water's flowing over it too quickly. So we need to go finer, which would be more like sand and slow the flow down. So what we'll do now is we'll grind off some coffee and we'll see where it's flowing um, and then we can make some adjustments together and I'll show you how to do that now. Okay, so assuming we've got coffee in the top of the hopper here now and we've opened up our little chute just to allow the coffee to flow through, what we're gonna do now is just push our cup up against the back here and make sure you've teared your scales off so they're at zero and we're just gonna grind some coffee through. <laughs> So what we're looking for is 20 grams of ground coffee and we're at 17.2 there. So we can just add a little bit more. Perfect, we're ex at exactly 20 grams there. So you can pull the handle out and just make sure that your handle is really, really dry. So anytime that water comes into contact with coffee, it's actually starting to brew. So you wanna have this really, really dry and nothing left in there so that we can get the coffee ready for brewing. So that's a really important dry deed to tea towel. Always clean this out. Even if you didn't have coffee in there, make sure you dry it out. The great thing about this dosing cup is you can sit the handle on top and then it doesn't matter what you do with it, you're not gonna spill it. And you can also look inside and make sure that it's nice and level for your tan. So it's really important that when you tamp, that you have it really flat and even 
because an analogy that I like to use, if you've ever cooked a chicken breast before, there's a really thin side and a really thick side, and the thick side will undercook and the thin side will overcook. Coffee is exactly the same, that even if you have the coffee perfectly, um, you know, perfectly ground at the right size, but then tamp it on an uneven angle, this side will undercook and this side will overcook. So having a tamp that has that auto leveling um, spring in there, just takes that variable out, which is what we're trying to do when you're making coffee at home, just get rid of those variables. So I'm gonna give that a tamp now. So I press it down once. Press it down twice and just give it a little spin as it's coming out just to polish it. And then we're gonna clean off those edges. Cool. So now we can lock in our handle. So we can lock this guy in and then lock him in, put your scales underneath, grab your cup and just tear it off. So like I mentioned before, um, we're aiming for that 20 grams of ground coffee to create 40 grams of liquid. And for blackboard coffee, you want it to run between 30 and 35 seconds. So we'll be able to see what this shot does. So we're gonna turn it on. This machine has a little few seconds of pre-infusion, so we're gonna wait for that. And then when we hear it go again, I'm gonna start my timer. So I'm gonna stop this at about 35 grams as it will spill over a little bit. So that keep dripping and it's gone up to 40 grams now. So we've achieved that in 16 seconds and knowing that we want to achieve it in 30 to 35 seconds, it's gone way too fast. So we know that our grind is too much like pebbles and we're gonna to need to make it more like sand. So we're gonna to have to make the grind a little finer to slow the flow of that down to get it to be in more of that 30 to 35 seconds. So we'll run another shot and see how this next one goes. Okay, so now we need to make this guy a little bit finer. Um, but the point I need to make is that when you make a change here, there's a little bit of coffee retention between where you make the grind um, change and this little shoot here. So if you're making a big change, and a big change would be anything more than trying to make a change of say five seconds, then you want to dump out a couple of um, cups of coffee. And that's what the point I was making before, if you're using the same coffee, you should only be making minor adjustments as you go. But I know because that ran so quickly in that 16 seconds, we know we need to get it up around that 30 to 35. So I'm gonna to have to make a big change here. So I'm actually gonna turn it up by about six notches. And we'll see what that does now. So I'm gonna grind through um, two cups of coffee now um, to So we make sure we see that change come through. So what we're gonna do now is fill this cup up. So we've made that fine adjustment. So we're looking for 20 grams again. So you can tell now we've fined it up so much and got rid of that two cups, it's taken a lot longer for the coffee to grind. And that's because the blades are so much closer together and creating that fine grind now. So we're gonna pull this out, give our head a little rinse just to get rid of any residual coffee that's on there. Give it a really good dry. And I've already got rid of my puck out of there. So again, sit your handle on top, give it a little shake, nice and level. And then again, just give it a tamp. So I like to go one and then another one with a little twist, pop him out and then just clean down the sides. You can lock your handle in, grab your scales, pop them underneath, grab your cup, tear that off. And like I mentioned before, and it's up to you whether you have your machine set to this, but this has a little bit of pre-infusion. So we're gonna turn it on. It'll kick in for a couple of seconds, just pre-brew. And then when we hear it kick in the second time, that'll be when we start our timer. So that's all controlled by that little app that we talked about before. So what we can see now is that we've made that um, change to much finer 
and we actually haven't even seen the coffee come out of the machine yet. So like I mentioned before, with the coffee being so much like sand, the water actually isn't even flowing out and we've just started to see it drip and we're already up to 30 seconds. So I can stop this shot and I confidently say that because we only got a few drips in that 30 seconds, that the coffee is way too tight and too much like sand. So we need to find a happy medium between where we were before and where we are now and that should give us hopefully be a lot closer to that 30 to 35 second shot. All right, so we need to make a change now to go a little bit coarser. So last time we went about eight or nine notches fine. So I'm gonna go back about four or five notches now. Alrighty, so um, I'm just gonna show you guys now what that pour should look like. So again, we're just gonna get rid of any of that residue on top. I've cleaned out my handle. I'm gonna get my 20 grams. and even some people even like to use their finger here just to get it like right to the edges when you're tamping pop him in always make sure your tamp's nice and dry at the bottom as well otherwise it'll cause little bits of coffee to be wet and start brewing so you can lock your handle in and grab your scales again put your cup under tear it off Get ready to start your timer. So turn him on. When that second kicks in, if you've got your pre-infusion running, start your timer. So we're waiting for it to go to 35 grams around there. We're gonna turn it off and it'll run over to that 40. Cool. So we're gonna stop that guy there. Happy days, we're good to go. Okay, so now we're gonna steam some milk. So a couple of things, obviously this machine is like a, um, basically a home commercial machine. So the steam's really powerful. Um, you want to have your steam like purged of any water that can sit in the end of the steam wand. So you get that out first. Um, oh, these small jugs will do one coffee, um, but it is much easier to steam in a larger jug. So just keep that in mind that if you're having trouble with your steam, maybe getting a larger size jug will help you slow things down a little bit. But essentially we want to fill all jugs up to the same point, which is just below the spout there. And it gives it enough room for the milk to increase in volume. Whereas you can't go too low or it won't steam properly because we're going to try and create a whirlpool action in there. So you want to start with nice cold milk and a really clean jug and you just fill it up to that point just below the spout. And to give you an analogy, we're going to divide this jug into quarters. So if you're dividing it into quarters and when we steam here, we're only going to use the top right hand corner of the milk. So we're just going to use that little section to steam and we keep our jug nice and straight and flat. Okay, cool. So we've got our jug into quarters and we're gonna use just this top right hand corner. We're gonna keep our jug nice and straight and flat. We've got a little chucks here for wiping the steam on afterwards. And to start off with, we're just gonna purge any of that residue water so it doesn't spray you. We're gonna bring this steam on out and to the right. And then we can pop our um, steam nozzle in to that right top hand corner there. And you see it's going through the front of the jug. The jug's nice and straight and flat. And we've got it just sitting in there and I can still see the line on the nozzle. And that's what you want. All we're gonna do is um, allow the milk to, allow the steam to enter the milk just by giving it a little hiss. And then we're gonna bring the jug up about half a centimetre and just allow it to increase in volume. And that's what helps gives us that really silky, silky milk by introducing the air really early in the piece and then just warming the milk up after that. So we've got it in the top right hand corner here. I can see the line on the nozzle. I'm gonna turn it on. Introduce that air early and then bring it up just to increase the temp. 
getting hot to touch. I turn it off, stop steaming. I can give my nozzle a little wipe, make sure there's no milk left on there, otherwise it'll cake on. And then you can give it a little purge. Cool. Now we've got a couple of bubbles there, but that's not such an issue because we can just roll them out and give it a little tap on the bench. Give it a roll and you see how silky that milk goes. So that's what you're looking for. A couple of things that help here is if you give your shot a little roll when you're making a milky beverage, we've got a double, we're doing a double shot flat white here. And then you give your milk a really good roll. And it's nice to have another little vessel just to pour a little bit of milk off just so you can see what your stream is like. And then you keep rolling your milk. And then you're gonna fill this cup up three quarters full just with it on a tilt. So you go boom. And then rest your jug on the edge and just push into the middle. And you just wanna start off with nice pretty circles like this. That's a really easy pattern to do. So um, yeah, doing that circular motion while the cup's tilted, roll your milk again, rest it on the edge and just push into the middle with a little wiggling action and that'll give you that really nice just circle shape to start off with practicing. So a couple of things I'll say just about your milk is that um, really common things that'll happen is um, it'll get really hot when you're holding it and then you'll quickly drop it or something. So make sure one of your hands is holding it back. Um, I've got kind of like hospitality um, hands, so my hands can kind of hold the jug. Um, but yeah, just keep one hand back and then the other hand to control it. Um, I find I'm right-handed and holding it with my left and then using my right to control it's the best. Um, but yeah, find what works for you. If you're having heaps of trouble where you're getting too much air in it, you're introducing um, too much air initially and not allowing it to sort of steam and increase. If you keep having trouble with this small jug and you can't get it, move up to a larger jug, like the medium size, and then you'll find you have more time to steam, more time to practice and get it right. So um, yeah, there are a couple of tips for troubleshooting. If yours is really thin when you're pouring, you're not getting enough air in, so just drawing it down a little bit more at the beginning. But you wanna hear that really gentle hissing sound, not like, cats dying inside your jug that's a bad news so um, yeah use that little tip where you divide it into quarters use just that top right hand corner or top left hand corner if your steam ones on the other side um, and just trying to get that whirlpool action happening is what you're looking for as you can see it makes a really tasty brew um, and so like I was saying before you can grab these guys off our website uh, they come in a range of different colors um, they just run off that normal plug that you'll have in your kitchen. Um, you can also sign up, we're doing um, Blackboard Coffee subscriptions. So if you work out that you're going through, say, a kilo a month, you can just have that rolling up to your door automatically as well, and you get your coffee at wholesale prices. So um, yeah, that's pretty much the rundown. So we've got the grinder, machine, um, and yeah, it's literally a commercial machine for your kitchen that makes bloody delicious coffee. Happy days.